Hi, Dan Swigart. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? So good. Uh, Dan Swigart, everyone knows, well, we know your face um, because we've seen you on I Am Shauna Ray season two. That's correct. Yeah. And Dan, you let's let's just start a little bit from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You're 26. 27 now. 27. 27. Well, you're from Wales. From Wales. Uh, you are very successful as an entrepreneur. I am. <laughs> you help companies raise money with venture capitalists. I do. You started an app. Yeah, my first company was an app. Yeah. We had a couple failures along the way, but like you and I talked about, that's what being an entrepreneur is all about. Uh-huh. So did you ever imagine in all the success, you travel all the time because you show it on Instagram. Did you ever think you'd be viral on a TV show in America? No. <laughs> No, no, not in this world, no. Yeah, I mean, that's the most craziest experience of my life. For people that don't know, I mean, Dan, you went uber viral basically over the past couple of months mm -hmm. for being on I Am Shauna Ray for dating her, who yeah. Shauna has been on this show, I love. She has pituitary dwarfism. You know, she's been branded on the internet as basically a 25-year-old, you know, stuck in an eight-year-old's body because she looks very young. But you got so much backlash for wanting to date this woman, who, by the way, is a woman. Yeah, I think the craziest thing was when the show aired, because it aired in December in the US, mm -hmm. no one really cared. Because everyone who watches the show sees her as 23. They don't see her as being eight. But then it aired in the UK, and then the UK media got hold of it, big headlines, then it went viral overnight. And then most people didn't even watch the show. They'd never even heard of Shauna. They just read the headline, and that's where sort of all this hate came from, and it made even more viral okay so you're that. saying we can blame the damn brits like there. yeah the brits yeah definitely the brits started it <laughs> okay good, yeah. good. anytime <laughs> anytime we can take some heat off america you know that's a good no yeah like, it was fine when it aired in america i got like a little bit of hate but not much but then when it hit the uk boom like overnight like i was in a meeting all day and my phone just kept pinging like constantly and everyone i'd ever met in my life it felt like from childhood to traveling in all different countries were sending me these articles everywhere in all different languages all over the world um, i had people reach out saying it was on like the national news in iran it was on like, all the biggest newspapers in china it was everywhere in china all over the world <laughs> and i was like oh this is this is crazy and i messaged sauna and she's like yeah i know i've seen it and yeah with that just came this big huge amount of hate and i felt like the world was crushing me um because obviously the media and um people YouTubers as well, they categorized me in the most hated group of people on the planet. Um, obviously, because of Shauna's condition, that's they put me in that category. And I just felt like the world was crushing me. Um, and then I had to sort of talk about it. So I made these videos um, on my socials, which you've probably seen. Yes. Um, saying how, you know, she's a 23 year old woman. She deserves to have a real world connection with someone. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you take that away from her, you, de you dehumanize her. And then there's all this love came. So I basically lost my faith in humanity, did these videos, and then a huge amount of love and support came. And I'm so thankful to the world because that was the lowest I've ever been in my life mm. um, with the world sort of crushing me like that. Um, but then the world sort of saved me. All these amazing people um, had a huge amount of support and they sort of started attacking all the negative comments. And then people started deleting the negative comments. And yeah, it, sort of the, the rainy clouds disappeared and the sun started shining. Um, and now it's all fine. But that was the craziest sort of month of my life, um, probably ever, just because of the, the, how big it was. What was soul crushing about it? Was it the wording? I mean, because you were branded on the internet as a creep. You know, that was like the biggest thing. I People made the innuendo you were somehow like a pedophile or you were into children because... You know, and look, I, like I said, I've had Shauna on. I've watched the show since season one. I mean, to me, she yes, she looks young, but she doesn't look that young. I mean... So was it the words, like, was that the, just the idea of being labeled like this creep or did you feel like people it thought was, you were a fetish guy or? I'm none of those things. I don't really care about the words. It's more of the way that they were attacking me. Uh, so I had a lot of people like giving a lot of hate to my family, to my family's friends, to my business contacts. Um, and it was just consistent. So yeah, I, I had to deal with all that. So I didn't really care of them hating me. It was more of my people around me, my, you know, my, my family, my friends, that's what really hurt me. It's really personal then. Um, so that's, that's the worst thing for me. Yeah. So I, I want to get into more about like how people attacked your family and your business. Cause I was very curious about that, but I was wondering, I mean, cause yeah, you're in Wales. How did you even see this show? 
yeah, I've been traveling for four, almost five years now. So I'm never really in Wales anyway. Um, but I was just on my phone on you know, watching different videos and I came across this video of Shauna and I can't tell you what it was, but there was a video of her emotionally talking about her life. And one of the big things I love about um, the way I connect with what I really value in, in a woman is the emotional strength. Um, and she, in this video, she just showed so much courage and I was like blown away by her life experiences and her emotional strength. And I didn't really anticipate what would happen next. I just wanted to, I felt like I needed to send her something. Um, so she had fan mail. Um, so I've never done this before, but I sent her some flowers on the card and the card said, go live your best life, wishing you all the happiness you deserve. And then she tagged me on Instagram saying, thank you. And then we just started casually talking and we were talking for quite a few months, just, just casually. And then I said, I was visiting the US, um, if she wanted to hang out. And then we did, so I met a family. And then we continued after that and we were you know, calling every month. And it was, we were getting to know each other about eight months before um, I came on the show. Most people think it was just out of nowhere, like yeah. just a video call, but we were getting to know each other for a very long time before um, the show. So it was more the video. You hadn't sat down and watched like season one. Uh, snippets. I'm traveling. I don't have a TV. Right. So it's just like snippets on my phone of like season one. Um, but I watched quite a few um, sort of episodes on online. Yeah. And yeah, I was just like really amazed by her emotional strength and her courage. Um, so that's sort of what kickstarted. It's, it's, it's a crazy story, I know. <laughs> Well, no, it, I mean, it happens all the time, right? I mean, I, I always tell people, I met my husband sitting next to him on an airplane. Oh, you, really? Yeah, okay. I just started chatting. And I mean, I think, Dan, now we've known each other 10 minutes, but I think you get the vibe from me. I'll yeah, talk yeah. to anyone. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can see that. I think you can see it. So I don't find it that strange because you send her these flowers, you're in, being encouraging to her, and then she DMs you and you guys start talking from there. And so when we see you on season two, was that actually the first time you'd met in person or? No, so I met in person before then. Uh, so I guess like sort of four months after we started talking, um, I came to Long Island and we met up, I met a family or half of a family. Um, and then, yeah, it was like another three months later that um, we started on the show. And did she ask you, I guess she must have asked you to be on the show, right? She must have yeah. said, oh, we're going to be filming or, or did it just yeah. the timing was coincidental? No, I guess most people assume that there's just a camera following around everywhere. Obviously, it's the whole production. It's a show. So, yeah, she we were getting very close. You know, we were talking every week and I didn't expect this, um, but she just rang me one day and she said, you know, we're, we're filming season two. Do you want to continue our connection on the show? And I thought, why not? That sounds, you know. A cool experience, something new. But of course, I could have said no and continue to get to know her um, just sort of off the show more more intimately rather than being publicly. Um, but I said yes. Um, and then obviously all the paperwork and stuff. And then I appeared on the show. So the very first time you meet her, I mean, obviously, you know, she has pituitary dwarfism. The very first time you met her, was it awkward? Were you like, it was even better in person or less awkward? How was that? Yeah, it was it was interesting because we'd only ever seen each other. Also, I saw her on the TV show. She'd only seen my Instagram. Um, so I think in her mind, it was like, who's this guy? In my mind, it's like pretty crazy. I mean, someone from TV who I've got a huge amount of admiration for. Um, but I think I, I made a comment and she'd asked about it all the time that, you know, I was like, oh, you're that short. Like she's way shorter than you think in person. <laughs> Cause she's yeah. three, I think she's like 311, uh, right? Isn't it? Three, three, three ten. Three ten. Yeah. yeah. Right around there. And you're, I mean, you look like you're a six foot tall dude. Just under six foot. Yeah. Just under six. Yeah. And yeah. Riley's quite short as well. So both of them are pretty yeah, yeah. short. Riley, her sister. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously you and Shauna talked for months. Like what was it? initially you were drawn to her courage. Then what was it that you liked about her that kept you guys going and you you met a couple of times in person? I guess she's always looking to improve herself mm. emotionally, learning, growing um, emotionally. Um, so we had like really deep conversations about life and, um, you know, she, wait, sorry, I forgot the word for it. And she's extremely ambitious, um, which is something else I really admire in people. Yeah. Um, you know, and she's got a show about life. And we were just very in-depth talking about each other's lives and supporting each other and sort of growing in a direction together. So it was like a very deep emotional connection, which we we built up over, over about eight months before the show. And we talked about this a little bit, but people did brand you as this like fetish guy that was into little women. I mean, had you ever dated a little woman before? Like, was this 
you know, you're, cause I think, I think it's important for people to know that you seem like what you're saying is you are really drawn to her personality and not her size. Right. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think it, it's, imp- I mean, Shauna knows this more than anyone. She knows instantly if someone's fetishizing over her. She knows mm-hmm. instantly when it's sort of a real connection based on personality. Um, and her family sort of know that as well. So they, they instantly know that. Um, so, you know, Shauna's very guarded. Uh, so she, she knows instantly. Um, but for me, it was that I saw her for who she was as a 23 year old woman. And I acknowledged that, you know, she has a disability, she has dwarfism, um, but it's something which I sort of accepted in her. And I knew that she, she was sort of, I guess, different in that way. Um, and I looked past that and built it with who she is as an individual rather than just seeing her as, you know, a, a little person, I guess. Yeah. What was it like meeting Patty and Mark? Because they grilled you. They grilled your ass on that show. I mean, they, you know, and I've, I've been a long time watcher. I mean, they are very protective. They're very worried about very, her safety, which I totally safe. get because yeah. I mean, anybody could take her away, you know, um, I, I, I'm going to ask you too, if you think they're maybe a little too protective, but um, what was that like being grilled by her parents on camera? I actually met Mark before then. Yes. Um, and that was pretty scary because <laughs> I spent the whole day with Riley and Shauna and then he came to pick them up and he was just in the car like, hey man. <laughs> I was like, hey, nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> it was, I felt you know, very, very, very scared in that moment. <laughs> Um, but then you know, he's a great guy. I've got so much love for Mark. He's a really, he's an amazing father. I've got so much admiration for him as a, as a father figure. Um, and same, same for Paddy, the mum. Um, but yeah, on camera, it was quite nerve wracking because obviously, you know, you're on camera to the world and then you're meeting, you know, the, your love interest parents, um, for the first time in a sort of formal manner. And, you know, they're asking a lot of really deep questions about who you are. So yeah, it was it was intense. I think you could tell by the end of it, I was pretty tired emotionally from, there's a lot going on, a lot going on in my head is what shall I say, you know? <laughs> and I actually, I just rewatched this scene yesterday and I thought this poor man, you decided to make sushi, which yeah. is like the hardest <laughs> dish. Like you should have just made pasta. I know. That would have been easy, but you were like trying to season rice. The, the parents walk in, it's like, oh my God, this poor guy, you know, Sean is giving you a hard time about the rest. <laughs> like this man is a saint. Um, well, tell, tell me too, like, you know, Shauna gets a lot of grief for being, a lot of people find her attitude condescending, sarcastic, and her, they admit on the show that their sarcasm is kind of a defense mechanism. Um, she's been given a very hard time online for the past two years about she doesn't give men a chance, you know? So was that your experience with her? Do you think that's part of her personality? Yes and no. I think it's such a point in the show with um, her dad, Mark, talking about it. But when it's just me and Shauna, um, it's all her guard comes down. It's very, uh, she's just very loving as a person. Um, but as soon as, I don't know, I guess her family are around or even, you know, I guess the camera's around, this, the walls are up again, it's guarded. So it's, it was different from just me and her to me and her um, with her family, for example. Uh, but yeah, I think it's definitely, uh, and we've talked about on the show, like sh- a huge defense mechanism for her. Mm. You know, she's always, she's had a really hard time growing up, um, always being different. So for her, it's a form of, you know, protection. You know, the only thing she has to protect herself is her words. And she will cut you in half with her words if she wants to. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think her family is too protective of her? I mean, they, they talk about on the show. Um, I understand completely why um, they are. Um, but no, I think... They're starting to understand uh, that Shauna needs to sort of leave the nest. And I think that's a big part of the show is you know, showing Shauna's life and the struggles she faces. And you can see in the show, she's come a long way from where she was um, at the start. And I think it's, I've got so much admiration for her because it's literally a show about her life. Like not many people have that, you know? Yeah. And it's so much pressure. You know, she's only 23. Um, having a show about your life, having the world judge you, comment on you, everything you do is a lot. Um, but you can see in the show, she's come on this huge journey and I'm so proud of her for where she is right now and where she's going in the future. And I think her parents, uh, and the whole family are on that journey with her. What is your relationship status now with Shauna? I guess because Shauna's on that big journey, learning a lot. She's constantly changing, learning, growing, um, emotionally. And I'm on, I'm the same. I'm learning a lot about my, myself sure. and the world. Um, and of course, like 
my lifestyle is very different to hers in terms of I'm always traveling. Yeah, you're on the road. And, uh, you know, she's in a position where she's not yet comfortable to go traveling. So right now we're still very good friends, like very, very good friends. We call like um, every week or two. Um, and, you know, we've said to each other that there'll always be a place in our hearts for each other. Um, so we'll always have that amazing connection and, and friendship um, for life, I guess. Uh, so I'm really proud of, of, of that and I'm proud to know her. Uh, but for now, yeah, we're both still just good friends. And when you were with her, you know, one of my gripes about the show is like every time she goes anywhere, I mean, you know, the production pulls like every blessed person they can find and go, oh, what did you think of her side? It's like, okay, let this woman go to the bar, have a cocktail. If people come up and have questions, fine. But I mean, when you were out with her, though, because you guys obviously hung out even off the show. Yeah. I mean, did people come up to you guys and say anything? Were they like, oh, is this your sister? Is this your daughter? Like, what did people say? Yeah, anything? No, good question. We went to a a bar together with some of my friends, um, some of her friends and her sister. And there was like a restaurant, we were in the restaurant. Then we went to like a dance floor and there's a bouncer at the dance floor. And he lets us all in and he stops Shauna. And then she's showing him the ID, her ID. And he's like saying, no, no, this can't be true. Like, no, 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 no way, no way. And then the crazy thing was in the corner, a TV is playing and it's her show. <laughs> and we're like, dude, look, like she's on the, she's on the TV here. And I, I, I pulled him away and I was like, look, dude, she's, she's 22. At the time she's 22, she's 22. Um, and then, yeah, he let her in in the end. But then all you know, people were t taking their phones out, taking videos of her. So I had to like go up to them and tell them to, to leave. Um, people came up to me, they were like, um, you know, is it, is it not past her bedtime? So this is just one evening and it's just constant. But I think it's crazy because most people who have a TV show, their life changes. Mm. and But for her, it's it's given her the chance to have more of a normal life in many ways, because half the people in that club didn't know her, half people did know her. She's pretty famous. Like we were walking around a park together, everyone's saying hi, Shauna. We go to a restaurant, everyone's saying hi, Shauna. So then people know that she's 23, yeah. um, and they acknowledge her to be 23. So it's interesting because now she can have a normal life from the TV show, whereas most people would be the opposite. Oh, that's so, that's so fascinating. I didn't even think about that because you're right now people know her. So they automatically know she's of age, yeah. like at so many places. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you and Shauna ever talked about having a future together? You're off, you know, your friends, you guys are both really young still, but I mean, going out with her like that, like, did you guys ever say like, could you, could you see yourselves being together long-term and, and could you feel like you could handle that pressure of like people filming her or making comments? I guess we never really spoke about the externals in the mm. relationship. So the, what the world would think is more of like me and her building a connection, not really caring yeah. what the world would think. Of course, if I cared what the world thought, then I wouldn't have gone on the TV show, right? Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, we talked a lot about traveling together and all these different places to go to. Um, but, you know, she's in a position in her life where she's got so much going on right now. She's starting a, a business. Clothing line, clothing she's line. Got, which is a gr brilliant to, idea. Going to co um, college. Um, potentially. So she's got a lot going on. Just got her driver's license. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, how pissed were you when you went to that charity bar event and Thomas showed up? Did you want to beat him up? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, 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 no. I mean, like, Sean, Sean briefly mentioned like, oh yeah, a guy I'm on a date with is coming tonight. He's also got um, dwarfism. I was like, oh, cool. That's fine. I mean, we, ne we never really spoke. Um, oh. Yeah, we saw each other, but didn't really. There's a lot of people there. Did that and, bother and I, you? Because people had very strong opinions. They felt like she should be with Thomas over you. I'm like, excuse me. Uh, you know, let the best man win here, yeah, you know? But yeah, I know. People... They, they played us off against yeah, each other. Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> did you mind? No, there's no bad blood there. Yeah, I think Thomas is a great guy. So <laughs> He fine. seems sweet, too. Like, he seems he seemed, very sweet. But it was funny. And she was like, I don't give a shit. Who, he, I, both of them can show up. I'm like, Shawnee, you're yeah. a savage. She didn't care. <laughs> You know, I think the other thing, Dan, is people do not think your relationship was real. Were you guys in a real relationship? You know, a lot of people think it was for TV or you were doing it to be famous. Um, we got very, very close on an emotional level. Um, it never really got physical. We kissed once. Um, but of course, I wasn't there for like long periods of time. It was more like I'd see her for like a week or two. Then I'd go traveling again and we just keep in touch on you know, by calling. Um, so never really progressed into a relationship. I guess they got to that point where it could have done. And then we both decided it wasn't right timing, um, for both of us. So we, we, we didn't go into a relationship. So yeah, not officially, but it was like very emotional, emotionally strong connection that could have just yeah. tipped into that. 
Okay, bummer. Wrong. I was really hoping for a hot sex story. No, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean has been on this show. When she was on this show, I asked, I go, okay, everybody wants to know. They speculate <laughs> about your life. Have you had sex? And she was very open. She said, yes, I have had sex. I do everything that any other normal person does. So I was hoping you'd have great hot sex stories you wanted to share. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no hot sex stories. <laughs> Uh, so tell, you talked about this at the beginning, but tell me what did people say and do to your family? And I, I thought about that when you went viral for being labeled a creep. I was like, God, I wonder if this is going to impact his business, job opportunities, clients. Talk to us about what that was like. Seek out my parents' Facebooks. And then they were commenting on every single post, um, commenting, replying to my family's friends, comments saying, how can you be friends with her? You know, her son's a pedo. Um, like you must be so ashamed of yourself to be the mother of a pedo. Um, and I remember ringing my mom and I was like, you have to go on Facebook right now. She's on the middle of a ski slope. So she gets a phone out, takes a glove off and she's going through for like 20 minutes trying to delete like all these comments. Mm. And it, that, that was pretty horrific. Um, and then, yeah, I had people on like Twitter, like I got tagged in a few like business related things. Um, and then people were attacking them saying, how can you do business with him? Um, and even today, even on the way here, um, I had like DMs from people saying like, how, you know, how could you possibly like her? Um, so yeah, it's pretty continuous. But I think it's, I don't know, I guess the people giving hate is because they've got a lot of, they don't have a lot of, I don't know, they're taking out because they don't have a lot of love in their own life. Yes. Um, so I don't really take it too personally. And also it's a lot of people said, because in my reactions, I was sticking up for Shauna rather than talking about myself. Um, but that's purely because I didn't really think it mattered who I was because I never did anything necessarily wrong. I could have been any other man um, in the world and I would have got the same amount of hate. Um, so it was never about me. It was always about Shauna and her condition. Mm. So that's why I always stuck up for her rather than sort of defending myself because it was never about me. It was always about Shauna. I, I admire how much you like, I guess, you, you really defend her, you know, and, and I, I really care about her. I, yeah. mean, I, I don't really cry very much but in one of my videos mm -hmm. talking about her. You can see me. I get very emotional. I'm actually crying in the video. Um, you know, she means so much to me. And we've been through so much together. And of course, you know, the, the TV show was a wild experience. But we were always there together, supporting each other through it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she'll always have a place in my heart. Um. Who would you like to see Shauna be with if she's not with you? I mean, you're pretty. You're, you're I'm Team Tommy. I've always been Team Tommy. <laughs> I think yes. me and Mark had a joke where he was going to get me a T-shirt saying Team Tommy, and we could I could wear it somewhere. And <laughs> wow. yeah. so, if you were not, if Shauna didn't choose you, you would want her to be with Tommy. I think he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, wow. She doesn't seem into him at all. Sorry. No, I obviously <laughs> I didn't know him until the show came out. So I just saw him at this event, but I never knew who he was. And the show came out and I was like, oh, he's actually a really nice guy. He look, he seems yeah, like a really nice really guy. She guy. Just, the chemistry did not seem like it was there, like it was with you. Yeah, I think her mum spoke about this, where if she's dating someone with dwarfism, it's kind of her accepting that she has dwarfism in mm -hmm. many ways. Whereas if she's dating someone who's you know, normal um, and by society standards, then she feels more normal. So I guess that might be one thing. But also that like, she's very closed off. I don't think you can put her in a room and say, like, date this person. You know, she's very closed off. Like, we got to know each other for, you know, eight months before um, you know, we got more sort of close on the show. Um, yeah. So she's very closed off. So I don't think her and Tommy could have just hit it off straight away because of that. Um, I think it takes a lot of time for her to um, you know, let her guard down and really emotionally connect with someone. Yeah. You seem like a very open person. You seem very loyal and that you're about human beings and not necessarily what they look like. So, I mean, after going through this experience, I mean, would you ever date someone again who was a little person or, you know, had pituitary dwarfism? Yeah, no, it's hard because I don't want it to come across like I have a fetish. You know? Right, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, That's true. so if, yeah, I can't, yeah, I don't know. It's highly unlikely, obviously, because it's such a rare condition um, anyway. And I've actually never really uh, met anyone else with dwarfism. So Sean was the first, actually, so... I doubt it, but you know, I'm very, as you said, emotionally open to building connection with whoever. So I'm not saying no, but yeah. Um, you, I think, exponentially helped. I mean, the show is very popular. 
But I mean, I think you like put the map, the show on the map even more. Did Shauna's family call you after you went viral and go, oh, thank God. Thank you. We're definitely getting a season three, season four. <laughs> yeah, no, it was more they were very supportive of me because they knew the situation I was in. And they I remember Mark messaged me saying, you know, we, we, we were behind you all the way. Um, so that was nice to hear. Um, but yeah, we never when it went viral, we were never thinking of like, oh, yeah, everyone's going to know the show. It was more like, holy fuck, this is like <laughs> bad. Like everyone in the world has seen this. Like I was in Asia and like I think I count like seven out of 10 people, maybe 70 percent of people I met and um, were saying, oh, I've just seen you on this or you know, oh, I recognize you from this. And oh, you're that guy. And it was everywhere. And even now, like, um, you know, people know it and remember it. So it was, it's crazy how many people it reached. You know, I, I made a list because I was sort of managing the, I guess the, I call it the shit storm where it just went viral and I was sort of managing it. So I had like, just sort of seeing where it was going and and, and how, because the, the articles kept changing about the storyline. Um, so I made a huge list and it, the little scroller on it's like this big and it's just like thousands of articles all over the world, different languages. Oh, I and know. then all the YouTube videos came and it was just crazy how many people had just found this story. And most people, as you said, like hadn't actually watched the show, um, but it still went viral. But now, yeah, Sean is a huge success. Um, you know, she's got so much going on. She's got such a, a exciting future ahead of her. Um, so I'm so excited for you know, what's next for her. Um, okay, well, what's next for you? I mean, Dan, you are a nice looking man. You're a little shy of six feet. I mean, you're hot. What, yeah. Are you dating anybody now? What's your status? No, no, single still. Single? single? Still. Yeah. Traveling? Yeah, traveling, traveling. Oh, by the way, let's clear that up because um, a lot of people think you're a travel blogger. Are you? No, no, no. I, just, <laughs> I think because my first company was a social network for travel blogging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, but they branded me as a travel blogger, the media. Um, I think just because I had a lot of travel photos, I guess. And are you nervous? Okay, with all these stories, right? You went viral, Daily Mail, New York Post, all this. I mean, everywhere you looked. I mean, are you nervous, like, continuing to go out and go to business meetings? You're here in L.A. doing that, that, that like, it's going to have a negative impact on you? Like, do you have any, like, PTSD feeling? Or are you totally, like, I don't give a shit. This I, is, like, yeah. I was on this show. We're friends. I'm not creepy. Like, I don't care what you think. I like to think that everyone, all my friends, people I do business with, they have the emotional maturity to understand the situation that she's 23, you know, she had cancer, she's got disability, um, and I was building a connection with her on this TV show as well, um, and it went viral. So I'd like to think of it like that rather than just reading a clickbait headline and assuming things. Yeah. Um, but you don't know, people might have seen it and said something uh, and not told me, um, but yeah, I don't think there's been that much of an impact neg negatively. Good. Yeah. Are you gonna be on TV again? Can you share? Are you, are you going to be back on season three? They haven't announced season three yet, to my knowledge. Oh, you're um, getting one. They haven't, but I can guarantee you you're getting one. Yeah, anyway. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> After yeah. that, that, that went worldwide. And, and you know, I mean, again, I'm not taking anything away from Sean and her family. I mean, it's, a, it's they're interesting. They put it all out there. And I think what I've enjoyed watching about the show is that they're – they love her so much. They're so protective. And, you know, Patty's trying to work through her own emotional issues. We saw in season two, she thought she might have the brackage. I mean, there's a lot going on, which I think is really great and really real because it would be, how would you, if your daughter had that, of course, you'd be so scared of the world. And yet as a viewer, you're like, oh my God, let her, like, let her live. You know, like it, you only have one life to live. Like, so I love the show. I think it, it, brings out a lot of different commentary. You know, it's easy to comment on the show. So I think you're definitely getting, a, they're getting a season three. Mm. Are you going to be back? I don't know. It depends <laughs> on Shauna, I guess, not on me. <laughs> Have any other TV shows asked you to be on? Yes, there's two. Uh, mm. but I can't talk about NDA, but there's two upcoming TV shows, different to Shauna Ray, off the back of that. Oh. Um, they reached out. So I think The Bachelor. <laughs> you think? I guess I think the bachelor. I think you'd be good no on the comment. bachelor. No comment. <laughs> uh, by the way, you after this went viral, who re you, you said all these media outlets reached out. Yeah, there was a lot. Um, Doctor Phil, some of the biggest TV shows like ITV This Morning in the UK, the biggest radio stations in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa. Um, but no one's really respectful of me and Shauna and sort of our families in that situation. They just wanted to get a story out of us. Um, so I, I refused them all. Um, but obviously I've seen your show and I know you're a really nice person and I saw you, you know, you, you did a video protecting Shauna and standing up for Shauna and my connection with her. Yes. I, really, I really appreciate that. 
And I remember telling you like, um, you know, I don't want to do anything right now just because there's so much hate and you said it's fine. Uh, so that's why I decided you're the only person I spoke to and probably will speak to on all of this. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I think it's sad that, pe I don't know, it's so crazy to me that it's just a clickbait story. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I, uh, when people, like, I guess when these news outlets, did they tell you that? Did they just say, oh, we just want you to sit down and we want to know, like, if you're a creep? Like, is that like basically they. It, it wasn't like that. But it was more like they were just very, like, trying instantly. Oh, what's the word for it? They were very much pressuring me and Shauna very quickly to, to go on the show, but not understanding the situation we were in. Um, it was more that they just wanted a new story out of it, whereas not actually understanding there's real people involved here and real people's lives. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we got a lot of hate. Uh, my family got a lot of hate for it. Um, so there's sort of no respect and understanding of the situation. They just saw it as like, wow, this story has gone viral. We want to you know, take advantage of it. How is your family doing now? Like, how's your mom with everything? Your parents, did, have they given you any advice through all this? No, no, they were very much had no clue what was going on. They just got bombarded with a lot of hate. <laughs> so yeah, they're fine now. They're fine now. All the socials are on private. So hopefully nothing like that will happen again. <laughs> that helps. Yeah, just private yeah. everything. But even like they, they went out for a walk, they came home and there was just all these journalists outside the house and they were just like trying to get a conversation with them. They're like, oh, what's going on? Because they didn't know it went viral. They knew the show aired like months oh before. And then just suddenly it was just- you Were know, you traveling at this point? They probably yeah, were terrified that was, something happened to you or something. Yeah, no, I was, I was, yeah, I was traveling at that point in time. Yeah. Oh my God. They must've been like, what the hell is yeah. happening? Wow. Um, I bet a lot of people, but you probably get a ton of like good DMs. I bet a lot of women are sliding in your DMs, throwing <laughs> themselves at you. Are you? Yeah. You can say that. Yeah. yeah. It's been quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Back off. Shauna will have something to say to you. Please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are single. Um, Dan, what, what can we promote? I mean, I, I'm so grateful for you taking the time to share your side of the story. I think this explains so much because, um, yeah, we all know how media works and it's like, they just they put that picture of the two of you up on, you know, out there paddle boarding. And it was just like, man's a creep for days. Like, oh my God, this is nuts. Like this woman is 24, 20, you know, headed for 25 years old. She deserves to have love. Just like you've said. Yeah. Um, what, but, like what's, you know, what can we promote for you? Where do you want people to find you, follow you? Do you have anything else coming up that you can share? I know you good got. question. I'll answer that, but I got, so say something else you can say in before. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, a big reason why I got so much hate was because, you know, she has this association with the tagline trapped in the body of an eight-year-old, mm. um, which she voiced about recently saying, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't attach that to herself. Um, same with her family, same with myself. We don't associate that tagline with her. Um, so that's the reason why people read that and they think instantly and assume a lot of things about her. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that she, you know, she's a 23-year-old woman. She has a period, she shaves her legs, she's had growth in certain areas like every other 23 year old. They just see like, oh, eight year old. And that's why YouTubers were seeing videos like, um, that's why I got dates eight year old. Like <laughs> some of them literally had that. Um, and that's why I, people gave me loads of hate, like saying, you know, I was dating an eight year old. I was like, she's not eight, like she's got dwarfism. Um, so that tagline is what created the hate. You know, if it just said, you know, guy dates dwarf, uh, someone with dwarfism, like, I wouldn't have got any hate. Yeah. Um, so that's the tagline is what makes it worse. And basically because people didn't watch the show, they don't understand who she is. They just saw the tagline, assume things. <clears throat> and and you know, that's what created all the hate. I know. And they see that picture of you guys side by side, you know, pictures of you side by side and make all these, you know, assumptions. And, and by the way, I mean, I think Shauna looks like she, I mean, you know, this season, especially like she, her hair, her makeup was, I mean, I think she looks so much older now in a good way, not in a, you know, yeah. She looks 50, you know, but yeah. I mean, like, it's like, <laughs> nothing wrong with 50, but you know, yeah. so, um, all right. Tell us what, where we can, like, you're pretty open on your social media. You share all your travel plans. Um, where do you want people to follow you, find you? Yeah. So a big thing from the show was obviously I got a lot of hate, but also mm -hmm. a lot of love. And I had a lot of people who are different by society standards, um, uh, with some sort of disability reach out and said, thank you for supporting them. Oh, wow. Not only supporting Shauna. Um, so somehow I, I, you know, was sticking up not only for Shauna, but for this whole community and um, which I had no idea that was going to happen, but it, it did happen. And I was so proud that it had that impact as well. And that's a big reason why Shauna does the show and, you know, voices about her condition to support people who are different. Yeah. Um, so a big thing for me is I'm doing a video series on my own socials. Um, so you can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, 
um, called Voices of the Unheard. So I'm having really deep conversations with people who are different by society standards and showing life from their perspective. Wow. Um, so that's coming out towards the end of the year. So I've got a lot of people lined up for that um, who are extraordinary, extraordinary stories. Um, so Voices of the Unheard, but it'll be on my socials. On So follow me on uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Which it's Dan Swigart on Instagram. Yeah, Dan okay. Swigart. And on YouTube as well? Dan Swigart. Everywhere you... And TikTok is Dan.Swigart. That's same. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Wow, that'll be an interesting um, series. I know you you really have become an advocate for... Uh, dwarfism, little people, you know, I mean, you really have like in, in just, you know, normalizing, they have, they date all kinds of people. It's like, it is insane that, that people any see anything different and then, you know, have all these crazy thoughts. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you're amazing. Thanks for sitting down you're on the amazing. Sarah Fraser show. <laughs> I had a ball. I loved it, Dan. You cleared it all up for me. Thank you. I want you two to hook up. That's the only other thing. <laughs> People always go, you always talk about sex. I'm like, yes, that's what everybody wants to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Sean is very open about. Yes. About and she yeah. should be like, I mean, come on, you know, anyhow, my two cents. Okay. Yeah. Dan Swigart. Thank you. Thank you very much.